So we found the formula for sodium chloride, right? It was easy, it was one to one. So we knew it was just NaCl. So what about something more complicated like magnesium iodide or aluminum sulfide? Well, how do we, how do we write the formula for that? Well, the first step I take is say, okay, I look at the whole thing and say, okay, that's, that's an ionic compound, right? You can recognize that because it has a cation name and an anion name. The IDE, which we learned, it, you know, corresponds to a monoatomic ion. So magnesium, we know that that is right here, okay? Find that on the periodic table. And we know almost always it's going to have a charge of 2 plus. So I'm going to go ahead and write Mg2 plus. Now iodide as an ion, it comes from here where iodine is. And th these guys like to have a charge of minus 1. So I write the symbol for iodine and I write minus 1. Or 1 minus or just minus. You'll see it a lot of different ways. So now there's a lot of different ways people do this. I think it's the, the easiest way is if you don't have like charges, okay? If the charges are different, so we have different charges here, then I just switch these numbers. I put this number there and that number there. And so now I have mg a one, but remember we don't write the one if it's a one, and then I two, because this two came down and we'll put it there. Now, some people will try to balance charges and stuff like that. I think that that could get kind of confusing, but you should always check yourself after after you've written a formula like this and say, okay, well let's just think about it. This guy initially had a charge of two plus. And now I'm saying that there are two of these guys there. There's two iodides. Each of them have a charge of minus one. And then if I add all that together, okay, I have plus two, minus two. The net charge is zero, which is what uh, ionic compounds like to do. They always like to be down in zero. So, okay, how about aluminum sulfide? Well, aluminum, I know it's right here. So as an ion, it's going to have a charge of 3 plus. Sulfide, well, it's right here. So it likes to have a charge of minus 2. So sulfide comes from sulfur. And you drop the ending at the IDE. So you know it's a monoatomic ion. Right there, it has... 2 minus. So I'm looking at it. Okay, we have minus or plus 3, minus 2. They're different charges. So I'm just going to swap them. This guy goes down here. This guy goes down here. And we get Al2 S3. And there's my formula. And of course, I could check that. I could say, okay, we have two aluminums. So that's an aluminum. This is an aluminum. We have three sulfides. Now, each one of the aluminums had three plus. Each one of the sulfurs had two minus. And let's see. I have three plus three. So we have plus six. And now I have minus two minus 4, minus 6, and so the net charge is 0. So that works. We're, we're happy um, because it got down to 0. That's what it likes to do. So what if we had, let's say, aluminum nitride would be aluminum nitride. 
Okay, we know it's an ionic compound. Aluminum is Al, and it's in this column here, so it's going to be 3 plus. And the nitrogen, well, it was nitrogen, but it must have lost three elect or it must have gained three electrons to become nitride. So we have three minus. Now, it's tempting to just get in the habit of saying, oh, okay, I'm just going to swap these, and now I go Al3N3. Yeah, all right, we're good. But if you just think about it, let's say these guys are back in that vat, right? Or what did I call it? A barrel of water. And we have a bunch of these aluminums floating around. Aluminum, 3 plus. Aluminum, 3 plus. And nitrogen, 3 minus. 3 minus. So, the first thing that's going to happen, you know, two charges are going to be attracted to each other. And we're going to get Al, which is 3 plus. And N, which is 3 minus. Now, the net charge already is 0 because those guys canceled out. So it's not going to keep dragging more, um, more ions towards it because it's already happy the way it is. It already made it to 0. So when you have like charges, right, if they're 3 plus and 3 plus, well then it's just 1 to 1. So you have Al in. And that's the formula for aluminum nitride. And that works the same way with sodium chloride. Sodium was in a plus. Chloride was Cl minus. Again, 1 to 1. In a Cl. So that would also work for like magnesium oxide. So magnesium, we have Mg2 plus, because it came from here, and then oxide, it's the oxide ion, so it must be 2 minus, and so it only needs one, you know, a 1 to 1 ratio. So it's going to be MgO, and that's the formula for magnesium oxide.